scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. A dimension of success that is bigger than science, bigger than philosophy, bigger than common sense. I want to show you a, a not a mystery, but I trust the Lord to equip us tonight with a higher dimension of the operation of the spirit. See, I want you to be so full of knowledge and truth that your life, it will be programmed automatically to be successful. You can't undo it again, even if you want to do it. Hallelujah. In chemistry, there are some reactions that are called irreversible reactions. Once they happen, they have happened. This is what is happening to your life. There is an irreversible spiritual reaction. Hallelujah. You will become something. And then when you become it, those who are running Helter Skelter will say, but this is what we've always wanted to become. And God will say, go and join the kingdom. Bishop talked of a 75 year old man who was in primary four. There are some classes in life you don't jump. Hallelujah. God designed it such that when you finish every class, a badge is given to you so you can know who cheated. You can do expo in the university, but not in life. At the end of it, life will count your level and count the badge and say, Oh, guy, you jump this, 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 go back many people will go back the bible says is the thief that follows through the window is that in your bible hustling can help you jump through the window is that true but life will bring you back i tell you may it not happen when you have children because they will go back too with you and as you are moving they'll be saying daddy why Lamentations 3.27 It is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth. It is good that a man bear his yoke. The Bible says the glory of the young man is his strength. Now that you are young, you can pray. Now that you are young, you can press. He said I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. For the night cometh when no man can walk again he said in the days of samuel when the word of the lord was cast may you be the light when darkness comes upon men and that light will make kings to come to your rising gentiles and kings to the brightness of your rising like sheba they will come with their goods to reward your sacrifices of today and Sheba heard of the wisdom of Solomon. It was so notable. She had to sail by sea and come to test him. The entire kings of the earth came together. Solomon is the biblical portrait of wisdom. I pray that this dimension of wisdom will fall upon somebody this night. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's write a few things. What does it mean to be successful in the kingdom? It's important that we understand the biblical concept of success. I want to define success by God's standards because there are many standards that have been presented to many people including believers and many of us have received wrong perspectives of what we call success but we trust God for grace to reorder a lot of things say after me I received this dimension of wisdom Say one more time, I received this dimension of wisdom. Grant us this wisdom, O oh God. Grant us this wisdom. I'll give you two definitions. The definition of success in the kingdom. Number one, it means to grow in the knowledge of God and in conformity to his nature and principles the first parameter to gauge and define success in the kingdom is not a car not a house not Jeep wrong parameters in Jeremiah 9 23 he says that let the wise man not glory in his wisdom let the strong man not glory in his strength. Hallelujah. He said, but let him that glory had glory in this, that he knoweth and understandeth me. The knowledge of God, to the degree to which you know God, and you have allowed your life to conform to his nature and his principles, you are considered to be successful from the perspective of the kingdom. So number one, growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of God. Paul was speaking to the church. He said, my little children in whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. Until the nature, the character, the formation of Christ. So that you become a visible manifestation of just like Jesus. The Bible says, In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, he was the physical expression of whatever you think God is. Hallelujah. Number two, it means to experience the blessings of God in every area of life. It's not enough to know God. It means to experience. Look at me. The Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation of the sons of God. There are many people who can explain success, but there are very few people who will ever experience it in this life. The world is not waiting for explanations. They are waiting for the manifestation. Hallelujah. So success in the kingdom means to experience the blessings of God. In how many areas? Success is not just about money and finance. No. Your health. Your family. Your relationships. It means to experience the blessing of God. Everybody say the blessing of God. In your career, in ministry, in whatever area of your life. That your life will be an example a portrait there are certain people in scripture that represented the portrait of certain things the biblical portrait of a blessed man is abraham the biblical portrait of wisdom is solomon the biblical portrait of the prophetic is elijah the biblical portrait of the law is moses hallelujah the biblical portrait of love is john 
the biblical portrait of faith is Peter and so on and so forth may you be a portrait that represents something to the body of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ number three kingdom definition of success we're talking about wisdom so I want to get it straight with us so that we know what we are not talking about tonight number three it means to accomplish your life goals and your God-given assignment. Success in the kingdom means you accomplish your life goals. You accomplish your God-given assignment. He said, my meat, in other words, this is what gives me satisfaction. To do and to finish the will of him that has sent me. He said, lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do thy will. Jeremiah chapter 1 he said before I formed you I knew you I called you I ordained you to be a prophet it means to accomplish your goals in life to do and finish your God given assignment one more number four It means to be a blessing to mankind. Success according to the kingdom definition means to be a blessing to mankind. Both believers and unbelievers. The Bible says he gives rain both to the godly and ungodly. When your life becomes a reference point both to believers and unbelievers you are successful. He said let your light so shine before men not christians before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven the bible says we are his workmanship created in christ jesus that we may do that which we have been for ordained for hallelujah are you blessed write this word down exploits this is our year of supernatural exploits by the grace of God. Exploits. It means unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment. Unusual, uncommon, extraordinary accomplishment hallelujah shita bakura bakata pratishi balanaba Let me give you the definition of wisdom. You're ready? Number one, this is the general definition of wisdom as we know. That wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. This is the general definition of wisdom. Wisdom is the accurate application of knowledge. When knowledge is applied or information is applied accurately, we call that wisdom. Are you there? Accurate application of knowledge. But you see, the wisdom I'm talking about tonight is not just the one that fits this definition. It's a higher realm. Mark 6. Mark 6. Let's examine this kind, this type and this dimension. Mark 6. Shiba umbra suprataka balada boskia. Say after me, I received this wisdom. 
are you there mark 6 verse 1 let's hurry up and he went out from there and came into his own country and his disciples follow him verse 2 and when the sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue he said and many hearing him were what astonished saying from where had this man these things he said and what wisdom is this which is given unto him and through that wisdom what happens he said that even such mighty works i'm talking about the kind of wisdom that will grant you access to command exploits beyond the realm of this earth this is not the kind of wisdom you find around the bible says jesus walked in that level of wisdom and when he began to talk they asked him they said from where where is this man coming from and what wisdom is this everybody say what wisdom is this so let's define the dimension of wisdom we are talking about this wisdom is the supernatural ability the supernatural ability to use the inspired and the written word of God to solve life's problems and make accurate decisions the supernatural ability to use the word of God both written and inspired to solve the problems of life and to make accurate decisions this is the dimension of wisdom that the ancients used in the bible and they commanded exploits the ability to use the word of god and all the inspirations that come from the holy spirit to give it applicable value here in the earth realm and command results with it hallelujah praise the lord let's examine a few kinds of wisdom that we have james 3 i want to take this carefully tonight because i want everybody to understand this i want us to get it the bible took time to talk about this dimension of wisdom in the book of proverbs wisdom even cries wondering why people are not interested in her pursuit and it says wisdom is the principal thing let's look at james 3 we read from verse 13 to 17 but the verse of emphasis is verse 15 from verse 13 it says who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you let him show out of a good life his works with meekness and wisdom verse 14 but if he have bitter envy and strife in your heart that means there are some levels of wisdom that only produce this glory not and lie not against the truth verse 15 are you ready it says this wisdom descended not from above so we see the first kind of wisdom this is the one we are talking about the wisdom that comes from above hallelujah the apostle is contracting is, is contrasting a wisdom that comes from above with other kinds of wisdom number one the wisdom that comes from above this one is given by God alone you don't read for it you can't search it out let's continue number two he said but it's earthly so we have earthly wisdom human wisdom what we call common sense the ability to know that if you touch fire it will burn you the ability to know that you cannot sit down on water ordinarily earthly wisdom sophia hallelujah number three sensual wisdom this is 
the wisdom that you get through study scientific wisdom philosophical wisdom hmm. wisdom that comes through studies hallelujah that's the kind of wisdom that makes all of the things that we have that help us relate with our environment and then the fourth kind of wisdom the bible calls it devilish or demonical wisdom this is the wisdom that is gotten from the underworld this is the wisdom that you get by your alliance and your allegiance with satan this is the wisdom that was used to build egypt a type of babylon it was the wisdom that pharaoh and the egyptians used and they accomplished supernatural extraordinary things but hear what the bible says verse 17 this is the wisdom we are considering tonight he said but the wisdom that is from above come on now where is it from it's not from the earth realm i will show you that you cannot find it it does not have a physical location in the earth realm it's first pure peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy this is the wisdom we are talking about this dimension of wisdom that cannot be gotten in this earth realm wisdom from above above and beyond anything that you know everybody say i receive that wisdom hallelujah there is this dimension of wisdom and there are men and women who are walking in this level of wisdom today solomon in scripture the bible says that solomon had an interaction with god and he was given this wisdom and the reign of israel during the dispensation of solomon as theologians tell us is the closest to the biblical portrait of what the millennial reign looks like there was no war hallelujah solomon became king and he brought rest and abundance to the nation of israel no war during his time there was peace and tranquility by this wisdom and tonight i pray that we will find it we will find it so that you and some of your family members will rest forever i pray for you that you will find it there are some things that when you find they become life they exempt you forever hallelujah job 28 how do we access this wisdom this supernatural ability that is not just found lying around this wisdom that defies scientific wisdom wisdom that is bigger than studies wisdom that is bigger than age age does not give this kind of wisdom this is the wisdom that when they gathered around with job many people were speaking out of different wisdom earthly wisdom sensual wisdom and early who said uh -uh. he said i was young and you people were old so i thought to keep quiet he said i thought that experience should teach wisdom but there is a spirit in man any kind of man hallelujah solomon was a very young boy when he began to lead the nation of israel 12 years of age but he became a king with this mighty wisdom and he ruled for 40 years 12 years how old are you those who celebrated their birthdays how old are you but a 12 year old boy confused and perplexed you see why he asked god for wisdom what will you expect a 12 year old boy to ask wife husband he said oh lord i'm but a small boy and god said don't worry there is 
a kind of wisdom that when it comes upon you you will produce exploits for 40 years hallelujah job 28 for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way of the lord for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way It's a long reading. Let me read. This is Job. The Bible calls Job the richest, blessed, blessed man in the East. He was a great man. When the elders saw him, they stood up. The young men saw him and they bowed their face. They could not look at him. What dimension of wisdom brought him to that level of success? Read with me, 28. Surely, there is a vein for silver. That means where silver is mine has been found by men. Is that true? And a place for gold where they refine it. Iron is taken out of the earth and bronze is smelted out of stone. He set it an end to darkness and searched out all perfection. The stones of darkness and the shadows of death. Listen. Verse 6, he said the stones of it are the place of sapphires and it had the dust of gold. He's trying to tell you what the wisdom, the philosophical wisdom of men have been able to accomplish. He said through that wisdom, they have even been able to find where gold and silver is hidden. They can come here and not need to dig down to the earth to tell you whether there is gold or silver. That's a measure of wisdom. Hallelujah. But verse 7 says, There is a part which no fowl knoweth. Birds fly in the air. They see things that men cannot see. But he said, There is a part that even the eyes of the bird cannot reach. No matter what plane it stands to search it out, it cannot see it. He said, And the falcon's eye has not seen it. The lion's whelps. The lion that does not fear any animal it is not restricted but he say even the lion has not been able to discern that place he put forth his hand upon a rock and overturned the mountain by its roots he cut out rivers among the rock and his eyes see every precious thing he binded the floods from overflowing and the thing that is hidden bring it forth into light verse 12 are you there here's the question but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding this is a question with all the excavations that happen there are cranes today that build all kinds of towers in the earth man has been able to stretch and explore wisdom there are houses that have been built inside the sea there are bridges that they build across seas but the bible says where is this very wisdom that with all the advancement of science, men have not found it. Let's fast for the location of this wisdom. 13. He said, man knoweth not its price. Neither is it found where? In the land of the living. In other words, it is not in this earth realm. You cannot find it here. No matter how intelligent you are. This is the wisdom that is above and beyond this earth realm. The depth. Where is the depth? The deep places. The places of the occult. The places where they do all kinds of things. That even the occultic realm has this to say. It is not with me. And the sea said it is not with me. That's why even wealthy people in the earth realm have not been able to find this wisdom. And the recession that is coming will prove it that although the, the sea represents the abundance of people because the bible says i will give you the abundance of the sea 
He said, even the sea, those who have worked in abundance, who claim they have found the wisdom, all of the people that Forbes magazine is listing, the Bible says they have not found it. And time will show that what they had was not wisdom. There was famine in Samaria to an extent that people did not have any resource they finished eating animals they ate plants and grasses it was remaining only human beings and mother said let's start eating our children where were the philosophers and the, the intelligent people there will be a replay of that yeah the bible says it in malachi 4 that the earth will burn with an oven and all those who do wickedly will be embarrassed let me tell you the truth if you do not access this wisdom whatever else you have are just shadows are you getting blessed tonight the bible says 15 it cannot be gotten for gold that means you don't buy this wisdom with money if you could buy it with money the wicked wealthy men including the illuminati they will buy everything and be the custodians of it but the bible says this one even gold cannot buy it you can't buy it it's not the personal possession of any man. It cannot be weighed for silver. It is not valued with the gold of Ophir and the precious onyx and the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it and the exchange of it is not for the jewels of gold. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearl or the price of wisdom is above rubies. It says the topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is this wisdom? That everything that men value today cannot buy it. This is what Solomon saw. And when he caught it, every other thing that could not buy it followed him come on now i give you a master key the bible says that wisdom is the principal thing listen to the word of god when he speaks because they are life to those who find them many people will not listen this is the problem pastor it's not just the hearers there are some of you looking at me and you are saying is this thing really important it will be important when all else fail in your life My son, the Bible says, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your heart. Keep them in the midst of your heart. They are life to those who find them. I show you a way, a way of escape out of the nonsense that many people live forever. There are people perpetually forever. There are some who have enslaved their generations forever. One of it is America. 17 trillion US dollars in debt increasing by an average of 12 billion dollars every day how many generations will pay it they are the ones we call the wise they are the ones who are trying to follow the bible says they can't buy this wisdom are you hearing me with all the wisdom of the military and the wisdom of governments they've not been able to stop war but a 12 year old boy came with this wisdom and for 40 years there was peace in the nation where is this wisdom my god i pray that somebody will get this wisdom solomon with this wisdom made silver like the dust silver like the dust if you find silver outside you are traveling to Kano first thing tomorrow morning to go and sell it first thing but the time came people saw it and they just left it my god i received that dimension of wisdom i receive it let's finish up seeing it is hidden from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air abaddon the place of the dead and death say we have heard its fame with our ears god understandeth his way this is the secret 
He said, with all this confusion that men are having, God is saying, I know where it is. I know where it is because I kept it. And I know the place of it. Where is this wisdom? How can you access this wisdom? With this wisdom, Daniel entered a strange land and he ruled through the dispensation of three different kings, the same result. The same result through the dispensation of three different kings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This dimension of wisdom, we're talking about accessing this wisdom now. This dimension of wisdom only comes from God. The first thing I want you to know about this wisdom in, an, in accessing it is that it is given. Everybody say it is given. God gives men. You don't study it. You don't look for it. It's a waste of time. God gives men. Hallelujah. When you meet his conditions, he will give it to you. God gives men. Ready? Let me write the conditions for you. The conditions for accessing this dimension of wisdom. Number one, you must have a passionate love for God and his agenda. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. What God has prepared for them that love him, not them that speak in tongues. Not them that attend koinonia. I has not seen ear has not heard what God has in store for who? them that love him we are going to examine Solomon's life very quickly before we pray because he's the biblical portrait let me teach you something every time you are searching out for something in life stop confusing yourself go back to the word and look for those who were biblical portraits of that thing you are looking for the bible says look to Abraham your father and to Sarah that Betty, he said, I called him alone and I blessed him. That means as far as God is concerned, when you are talking about blessings and prosperity, Abraham is God's portrait of a blessed man. Not Bill Gates, not Warren Buffett, not Carlos Limas Hilu, not all of those great men. Thank God for them. But he said, look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that Betty. When it comes to wisdom, it was given to Solomon. There are many people that operated that dimension of wisdom. Daniel. Different people. But we are going to examine the life of Solomon. Let's look at his life quickly. Conditions for, for, for accessing that wisdom. Number one, passionate love for God. First Kings chapter 3. I prayed my heart out and I said, Lord, let your people find wisdom. May they find wisdom. Many of you will thank God for these teachings years to come. Are you there? First Kings 3. Let's examine the life of this biblical figure that was able to access this level of wisdom. The first thing the Bible has to say about Solomon in chapter 3 verse 3 is that and Solomon loved the Lord. Everybody say Solomon loved the Lord. And Solomon did what? The Bible didn't say and Solomon served the Lord. Solomon loved the Lord. See, let me tell you, your love and passion for God is the number one thing he's searching for even beyond your service. There are many people who serve God, but they do not love God. They don't have that passionate love. They are only serving God because of formality or because of their environment. You are in a family where everybody is a Christian. So you have to go to church. You have to come for koinonia. He said, and Solomon did what? Love the Lord. That means every other thing that he did was because of that love. A man can serve God because of wife. I hope you know that. A man can serve God because of husband. A man can serve God because of the whiplash of employment. And you just find the nearest church and say, Ah, let me find refuge in this place. And rest before I find out what is going on. 
people can serve God for various reasons for car for house for prosperity for job he said but Solomon loved the Lord do you love the Lord the first condition for accessing this wisdom this is why the kings of the earth cannot get it because they do not love the Lord I love you Lord I love you Lord it's from the bottom of my heart I love you Lord I love you Lord it's from the bottom of my heart I love you Lord I love you Lord from the bottom of my heart see when you give God your heart not your hands not your tears when you give God your heart I'm giving you a big secret many Nigerians do not love God many pastors do not love God they love ministry they love suits they want ministry advancement but they do not love the Lord many leaders in this country do not love the Lord many young people hustlers who keep hustling forever they don't love the Lord many fathers many mothers do not love the lord and we wonder why his blessings and his wisdom is far from us some of you here looking at me don't love the lord you love the house of god you love the people of god you love christian music but you don't love the lord and solomon loved the lord and solomon loved the lord can that be your testimony that will say ah and Eben loved the Lord and Paul Maman loved the Lord some of you as you say and you love the Lord your spirit will tell you no way you say and you are now willing to love the Lord not that you love the Lord I keep emphasizing this passion for God because if you are not rooted in love success will make you run away from God are you hearing me success will make you do what let me tell you if you enter real success it's a double-edged sword it can kill you are you hearing what i'm saying there are levels the, the problem is many people in nigeria are so poor and unsuccessful it cannot even cross their mind what true success looks like and solomon loved the lord that's the first condition number two you must have a sincere desire to be a blessing you want to access this wisdom you must have what a sincere desire to be a blessing same first kings 3 from verse 8 and 9 god gave solomon an open check he says solomon what do you want me to give you Look up. If Solomon was a Nigerian and God says, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? His first question will be, is he only me? Will there be any other person with it? Say, no, only you. He say, ha, God, you better carry paper and buy room. Let me empty my whole life. Let me tell you what I want. The first thing is, any day anybody speaks against me, let him die. One. Two all the people that have called me a failure prove a point to them is that not true number three make those people serve me so that forever it will remind them let me tell you hear me if that is your desire i assure you it is not god's wisdom you will never get in life you can get any other thing but you can't get god's wisdom that way the Bible says, indeed, Genesis 12 verse 2, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. There are many people who, who, who jump in church. Oh, I'm a millionaire. I tell them, you can get it by, by working for 50 years. But I assure you, if it is through the wisdom of God, your heart must be ready to be a blessing. Otherwise, you cannot access this wisdom. Do you know how many self-centered, selfish people we have in this world? 
Some of you are saying, me, I'm not selfish. How much have you held that you know whether you are selfish or not? Solomon had the opportunity to say, Lord, me and my wife and all the people, bless me. Hear what he said, verse 8. He said, and thy servant is in the midst of thy people. People, people. When you love God truly, you will love people many pastors preach day and night to congregations they don't love they are just trying to use the congregations to show they are making progress in ministry i told god if you never bless me in this life if i never become successful in this life i may do many things but not loving you is not one of them he has my heart believe me I've crossed a bridge and burnt it that I'll never return again. When you see God blessing certain people, check their heart. I had Bishop Oyedeko shout this thing. He said, you want to know the secret of my blessing and the blessing of this ministry? Check my heart beat for God. There are many of you, if God says, between 12 this night and 1, anything you pray anything you ask me i will give you i mean jesus appears to you the first thing is you wipe sleep from your eyes and stand and mention the name of all your loved ones and mention everything till five minutes to one you will sit down and say lord i'm still thinking okay i remember do this for me for me for me i trust god that in the years to come in koinonia our testimony will not just be god gave me tea god gave me bread god gave me handkerchief but that god used me to do this for somebody else it is at that point we will clap right now we are clapping for god change me and we thank you for it god did this a millionaire is not one who has one million a millionaire is one who has become a blessing to people with up to one million oh god i want this I want fame. I want power. Give me this church. Oh God, I'm tired of wearing suit that tailor sold. I want to wear the one that I'm buying. Up. Oh God, change my story. And God is saying for you, or for me, or for my kingdom. And God said, well, this, when we get to that bridge, have you had people say that to you? Say, when we get there, we'll cross it. You better, God can see your heart. Everybody say, I love the Lord. And I desire to be a blessing. See, can I tell you, if you are looking for success for yourself, you don't need much effort. You know, but you know that. How many clothes can you wear? How many books can you write? But when your heart is set for the kingdom of God, then you are you are not ready for the avalanche of exploits that you will do. There are many people who want anointing. Some people come to me, they just say, oh, man of God. These are Buddha people again. They come, oh, man of God. My ministry, we've not been experiencing the hand of God. And I've, I, I trust God for the oil on your life. As if I'm selling it. Say, man of God, I believe if you touch me, there will be an explosion. And I'm saying, look at this guy. From the way he's talking, from the way he's talking, this guy is going to yoke and kill the sheep. There are many people who want to go on air. Oh God, take me on air. God say you, for because of the way I love you, you won't cross this realm of ministry. When you see God not blessing some people, don't be too quick to beg on their behalf. Ask God why first. Some of our fathers have prayed. We have done Bible studies. We brought prophet, priest, king. We brought everybody to our houses. Change our story. Oh God, say amen. God said no way. You are the one shouting amen there. Yeah. I have seen your heart. Are you ready to be a blessing? I'm telling you a secret. It does not cause God to change your family or your situation. But can he have your heart? Are you ready to truly be a blessing? Can you sit down today and see a family come and they love God? And you just look and the Lord say, build a, build a three bedroom flat for them. And don't announce it. Build it, put everything and come and tell them this was why God blessed me. You say, if I do this to you, here's the condition. It must be on newspaper. 
he must be on CNN all of you must come and kneel down and say thank you and I will give you the key in front of everybody that way they will now know that I'm serving the Lord it doesn't work that way how many of you are ready to be blessed how many of you know that if, if you are successful today you will give scholarships you will build orphanages you will build churches let me tell you the truth many of you are lying because you've never done anything with the 10,000 you have even your tithe you have not been faithful you just saw 1,000 hey! 1,000 you can buy palm oil you can buy salt Magi one tier Garif is the half one said it will reach Number three. So number one, a passion for God and his agenda. Number two, a sincere desire to be a blessing. Say I'm a blessing. I'm a blessing. Say I refuse to be a consumer. Say it. I refuse to be a consumer. I'm not that man praying for God to bless others. Have you had that kind of nonsense, satanic, anti-God's agenda prayer? Where they say, may God bless you all. As you bless, please, our pocket is open. Drop it for us. What kind of cause is that? There are people in life who are waiting. That's, that's their prayer. Oh God, bless this guy. He has already gone far. Just finish with him for my sake. Because we hate paying the price. Say, God, please. The way, the way Tokumbo is going now, Lord, I thank you. Keep blessing him. I say, TK, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. The prayer I would have done for myself, I'm doing for you. Don't forget me. No, no. You must desire to be a blessing. Because you see, how can you pay so much price just to bless others? Does it look fair? It's not, it's not the attitude of natural men. When you suffer alone, what happens? You chop alone. That's what they've taught us in Nigeria. Pastor, <laughs> they can't die alone. Hallelujah. That's the language of Nigerians. I suffered alone. Were you there when I was suffering? Say no. So now it's my turn to chop. I don't know you. I don't know your name. We have never met. Say Fatima. Say Fatima. Me. I don't know you. I've never seen you. If your heart is not set to be a blessing. I am telling you, I'm not just talking of money. You will never really get anything. Hallelujah. A sincere desire to be a blessing. Number three, to access this wisdom, you need to operate the law of giving. First Kings 3 verse 4. That's what we see in the life of Solomon. Everybody say the law of giving any day i talk about the law of giving don't be confused let me tell you straight to the point what i'm talking about the law of giving is number one your tithe whenever i talk of the law of giving it's not some unambiguous thing number one your tithe malachi chapter 3 from verse 20 to 12 let me tell you something i don't care any other giving you give even if you give one billion for any project if your tithe does not precede your giving life you only wasted your time are you hearing what i'm saying your tithe is your number one obligation in the law of giving please listen to me i pray that god will make many of you see that this is not some scheme by men of god to collect money from you because if that is it you, you will never be successful this is not about money it's about maintaining an open heavens the Bible says, bring ye all your tithe into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, hear which saith the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast its young. And he says, you will be a delight some land and you will be blessed. Seven prophetic blessings. That follow a tithe. Many people think tithe is all about money. Tithe is about giving God first place in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, how much? It's just 5,000. Even God understands. Oh, my father gave his tithe. 
for me all these flimsy excuses will keep you a failure in life say I receive grace to tithe be consistent I have envelopes envelopes in my house anything that comes in I've told you this is the secret of the blessings of ENI it's not a mystery the finance department are on perpetual instruction I don't care money for what is raised in this place before we touch one naira or one dollar or one pound one whatever it is the tithe is taken first when we started the school of ministry the same thing the tithe as i speak to you right now the tithe for the collection of this night is already set there were many trees in the garden of eden but God kept the tithe and told man, don't touch it. Every time you take what God did not give you, he will return back or something. He will collect some, something that he had given you. Say amen. Every time, some of you, you take the tithe, what happens? He will drive you out of the garden. Hallelujah. Could this be the reason why some of you may never go far in life? You take 10,000. You say, Lord, in my heart I've given you. But right now, let me just use this quickly. Let me just buy Panadol. I promise you. There's 120,000 coming on Wednesday. When it comes, I will add it. These are gimmicks by Satan to kill you. Some of you, you, you in your mind, you even have it in a pen. Your tithe from March to now that you plan to give God. But you have not yet given. You say, God, you look at the heart. Number two, your kingdom investments. I'm talking of your offerings. I'm talking of your seeds that are sown in the house of God. If you have a business tight, you have a church tight, you have anything tight, tight, and you and open heavens. So your kingdom investments and then giving to God's servants, prophet offerings, and giving to the needy. These are the things that constitute the law of giving. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 4, it says Solomon offered a thousand. Everyone say 1,000 bond offerings. Say 1,000. Look up. We are not up to 1,000 in this place. Do you know what it means to see a field as big as football field and you just stand from somewhere and see them dragging animals 800 801 802 870 900 950 991 to 1000 and then they caught all of them you just see blood spilling around what waste what waste and god saw a man doing this while solomon got to the 900 one he said lord steal for you he got to 991 he said lord for you and he killed the 1000 and god said no way god himself had to come down and say solomon you have touched me you have touched me in what do you want come on now there are some sacrifices that will compel the presence of god hallelujah in my little life i've had the opportunity to do some dangerous givings i've told you God does not love a cheerful giver alone. God also loves a crying giver. There is he that weepeth and bearing precious seeds. There is he that weepeth. There are some givings that you don't just give laughing. You will give and cry. You will give and call yourself a fool after the service. How be it? Your faithfulness will endure. Finally, under accessing this wisdom, ask of the Lord. First Kings 3 verse 9, Solomon asks of the Lord. Solomon asks of the Lord for an understanding heart. James 1 verse 5, the Bible says, Does any man lack wisdom? Let him ask of the Lord. Let him ask of the Lord. Tonight we are going to be asking. I told you this wisdom. See, this wisdom comes to you from God. It's an impartation. 
Solomon discusses with God in the night in a dream. The next day he wakes up and he starts judging with that wisdom. Immediately. Immediately. Daniel. Daniel. I'm going, we're going to consider that scripture quickly before we pray. Daniel. When the king had a dream, could not interpret it. He said, let's just rest. He rested that night. That wisdom worked. This is not the kind of wisdom that will happen over time. Uh -uh. When it comes on you, it speaks at once. Hallelujah. Finally, before we pray, let's consider the workings of this dimension of wisdom. The operation. How does it work? I've told you what it is. I've told you how to access it. How does this wisdom work? Proverbs 18 verse 1. The first way is the sacrifice of meditation. This is how this, this is the first way this wisdom begins to find expression. What did I say? The sacrifice of meditation. Proverbs 18 verse 1. The Bible says true desire. A man having separated himself, seek it and intermeddle it with all wisdom. Meditation. Meditation. Many of us do not understand the power of meditation. When you set aside time and you sit alone and you begin to allow the Holy Spirit to find expression and then that wisdom begins to find expression. Meditation. Daniel chapter 2 from verse 14 to 6. Please let's look at it quickly. I want to show you a very sound warning and impart wisdom for some of us. Daniel 2. I cried for many years to the Lord. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Daniel 2 from verse 14. Are you there? Say amen. Let's read it quickly. Verse 14. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, who was gone for to slay the wise men of Babylon. They could not interpret the king's dream. Look at this wicked king. You had your dream and you forgot and you were angry. Just like many people in Nigeria, they blame people for their failed dreams. They wanted to be great, it didn't happen. And now they're angry at everybody. Listen, Daniel said this in verse 15. And he answered and said unto Ariok, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Ariok made the thing known to Daniel. 16, listen. He said, then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he should give him, that he should give him. This is what has killed a lot of people in our generation. We are in a rush for everything. That's why the spirit of wisdom, the touch of wisdom is not upon our lives. We are in a hurry to make money, a hurry to do everything, a hurry to get that job. A hurry to do everything in life and so we don't consult with God we don't pray we don't have time to meditate to allow the wisdom of God to edit our lives the Bible says many are the counsel that are in a man's heart however it's a many are the purposes in a man's heart however the counsel of the Lord that shall stand we never do anything as in, in a minute let me tell you something anybody that comes to meet you with anything in life in a rush run away quickly did you hear me run away quickly daniel said uh -uh, king you are rushing this thing too much he said give me time if you give me time i will meditate and the lord will reveal to me and i will tell you let me show you another scripture we'll soon get up and pray are you there verse 19 
he said then was the secret revealed unto daniel in a night vision when he he had time and he went in the night meditating upon this thing and during the night time not the night moment the night time this thing was revealed to him every time you take time see there is nothing that should compel your excessive hurrying in life because your hurrying in life will produce casualties that when you get to that place it will hurt you and those who have been walking slowly will come and pass you you see somebody running and is running on 200 and somebody is running on 120 the next thing they are bringing the mirror out of the bush and the man is sitting on the blood on the ground with blood and somebody who was going on 120 will come and pass and say sorry what was the rush for especially for some of us who are men make sure you think through don't make stupid decisions no matter how much you think you know the answer there is a way that cement right onto a man but see great leaders are not men of hasty decisions they think through no matter what the urgency is learn this is a big secret in life daniel said tell the king to give us time and this wisdom will work hallelujah the sacrifice of meditation everybody say i receive grace to meditate some of the things you see today are the things that we get by meditation this is how i get the messages for the week i spend time i pray and i just sit in his presence and allow this wisdom that cannot be found in the land of men when that wisdom comes you know accurately what it is that god wants you to do hallelujah number two this wisdom manifests when you begin to speak or make decisions is supernatural is supernatural it's not wisdom that is rehearsed all of you some of please look at me look at me let me show you that some of you have already been working in this thing how many of you have had someone come to counsel you i mean somebody come for you to counsel the person and you know that you are not married yet you are talking to couples about something there is no way you would have known you did rehearse it you did rehearse what to tell them this is that wisdom it's like you are prophesying somebody will ask you a question and you begin to speak you are talking and for hours at the end of it you wish you recorded your message because you know you can't find it again this is that dimension of wisdom are you listening to me somebody say i received that wisdom luke 21 verse 15 if you can project it using the amplified version but let's just look at it. Luke 21, quickly. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus. Somebody will access this wisdom tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Luke 21, verse 15. It said, For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversaries shall not be able to resist nor gain say listen listen this wisdom begins to manifest when you are speaking it's not something that you have that you say i have it I can. no the moment you open your mouth you will begin to utter things that are not of this realm hallelujah and so you go to your office and they are deliberating on a decision and many people are just bringing foolish theories that are not applicable and you keep quiet like Elihu suddenly you will open your mouth he said open your mouth and I will feel it he didn't say I'll open your mouth when I feel it open your mouth and I will feel it suddenly you begin to communicate wisdom and they look at you my father calls me a young man with gray hair ah there is a dimension of wisdom that when you speak people will look at you and say no this cannot be wisdom that is accumulated by experience this is an impartation of this dimension of wisdom i pray in the name of the lord jesus 
that from today as you open your mouth to speak you will speak that order and that operation of wisdom many of you have used your mouth to close the doors of your destiny because what came out was foolishness not wisdom or what came out was just scientific knowledge i pray for someone tonight i pray for someone tonight may god make that when you meet your destiny helper the right words that will be upon your lips that will compel men there are many people today moving around with business proposals and they know what books say they should say but the bible says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece could this be what you need to tell your project supervisor for him to let you go with your work could this be that this is what you need to tell somebody to help you with capital for your business could it be that this is what you need to tell somebody to employ your loved ones let the opening of our lips utter wisdom that is beyond this realm so that you will be noted for that wisdom Matthew chapter 10 verse 19 to 20 we're running Matthew chapter 10 I feel the power of God in this place we are going to pray this this wisdom must hit somebody this night this wisdom must hit somebody this night someone must write it in your jota that on this day you encounter the dimension of wisdom that cannot be found in the land of the living verse 19 matthew 10 verse 19 but when they deliver you up that means when you are in trouble he said do not be anxious how or what you shall speak for it shall be given you in the same hour he said it shall be given to you when that means when you stand even if you don't know what to say some of you when they invite you to preach you are shaking you are saying oh god what will i say hold on hold that mic now with that spirit of wisdom and you will be amazed at the utterances that will come out of your lips verse 20 he said for it is not you that speak but the spirit of your father that does what speaks in you so although you have seen a man what is really happening is the spirit of god speaking through a man that's why you weigh the man and weigh the wisdom that is coming and say what wisdom is this i pray that in years to come this will be the testimony that they will produce a documentary on some of you and name it what wisdom is this you will do things that defy the wisdom of men that the world will celebrate you for it solomon operated in this dimension of wisdom there were two women who came two harlots one slept on a child and by that wisdom he deciphered accurately and the bible says his fame was spread abroad there is a level of wisdom that will ripple across territories people will hear it let me tell you something people have mouths that can talk they can as well talk about your wisdom and say when it comes to brother so and so no this is a this this guy operates in a class of wisdom that is not known to men Doth not wisdom cry Doth not wisdom cry look at how solomon cried with this thing in the book of proverbs solomon said wisdom is begging people wisdom stands on the street and see many people looking for success Doth not wisdom cry wisdom was crying and said pay attention to me with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches but people will not listen The third way this wisdom manifests is through innovative and inspired ideas inspired thoughts job 32 verse 8 but there is a spirit in man and that spirit can bring inspiration everybody say inspiration that dimension of wisdom
how did they build the tabernacle in the wilderness look at me they were in the wilderness there was no source of help but they got wisdom from god and they built the tabernacle in the wilderness brothers and sisters i can kneel down and beg you tonight do not trivialize the power of what i'm telling you there are some messages until you get to certain realms it may not be useful but when you get to that realms you can never be a leader without this you will waste your time there are many frustrated men of god who have power but don't have wisdom it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to be a leader it takes wisdom to be a father it doesn't take age it takes wisdom it takes wisdom to command prosperity it doesn't take years of time it takes this wisdom lastly dreams and visions daniel chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23 the bible says and the secret of the lord that secret was revealed to daniel in the vision of the night how many times have i laid down to sleep and in the visions of the night god opens things to me that cannot be found in this realm that's how some of these messages come see can i tell you something some of these great men like john muen and the rest the reason why some of their songs are timeless is because they came by this wisdom it is this wisdom that transported it there are others whose songs just came from musical argument so it will change as time changes but there are others it comes with a spirit the wisdom of God comes from the realm of eternity. That's why some of these messages are timeless. Even after 30 years, they will still be relevant because they come by the wisdom of God. There are some messages that have gone extinct. As the church of God is growing, they pack them and throw them away. But there are certain fathers of faith who have gone to be with the Lord. But their messages are timeless because they were a byproduct of this wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. He said, exalt her and she shall promote you. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1. It says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us. So he spake to us in sundry times and in diverse manners. Communicates his wisdom to us. Shiva katabalaraba an idea that people will be dying for in the night see do you know that solomon received his wisdom in a dream if he had a roommate the roommate will never know that something has happened you just wake up in the morning come on now not the same person who slept i pray that someone will sleep in the night as an ordinary person and wake up in the morning with an order of wisdom i cried to god yes in my life i said lord I want you to give me this wisdom this message i'm preaching to you tonight is an old message it's an old message i'm preaching to you my experience i found this thing and i said come on lord a 12 year old boy lord i'm available give me wisdom that is bigger than my level in life Give me wisdom that is bigger than my experience. Give me wisdom that is bigger than everything I know. That wisdom will take you to a place where everybody around you is an elder except you. Yet they will give you a seat among the great. There are some of you, this wisdom will make, if you ever see your colleagues, it's just because you want to discuss with them. But as far as success is concerned, uh -uh, it will take you to a realm. Everybody uh, is far older than you. They'll say, how did you come this fast? It takes men years to do this. Exploits by this dimension of wisdom. Through wisdom is any house built. Through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom through wisdom there are times I'm meditating nobody distracts me because at that time the spirit of wisdom comes into my room 
and begins to bring illumination witty ideas inventions on common solutions that are not known to men hear me many of you will have it may not speak now because of the time component of life but wait until he starts speaking see there are some of you i tell you the truth Zaria is too small for you. Everybody is watching you. But you know that what is inside you is bigger than Zaria. Is bigger than Nigeria. That young man called Zuckerberg. Before Facebook went far, there were people who wanted to buy it. Before the idea became global. And they wanted to buy it for 8 billion. He had not even become a millionaire then. He was just... They wanted to price his idea he said no i know this thing will shake the world eight billion is too small at that level see i tell you the truth in my mind i've left zaria in my mind i'm out of this country there are some of you the bible says there are some people this earth was not worthy of this earth was not worthy of you are seated in the crowd some of you as you are looking at me like this that's how one day you will sit down wisdom will give you a seat there are no vacant seats only the one wisdom creates the seats in nigeria have finished but wisdom can make room it can give you a seat i bring you a message stop wasting your life and wasting your time galloping in confusion you can walk circumspectly no matter what the price is pay it with wisdom and you will know you are paying it for the last time hallelujah rise up on your feet let us give our generation what our fathers did not give for the next five minutes we are going to cry i want you to take it serious you're going to cry your heart the bible says let him ask of god i have seen this in my life in a measure I can tell you there is something called the spirit of wisdom. You will shock men. Lift your voice and begin to cry. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. So go protect it. Thank God for your degree, but get wisdom. Thank God for PhD, but get wisdom. Thank God for books, but get wisdom. That divine ability to take the word of God and translate it. Come on, pray, sister. Pray, my brother. Pray for the sake of your generation. Pray it. Say, Lord, I always knew I'm not ordinary. Come on, pray like a warrior. Pray like a champion. Pray like a destiny shaker. You will do terrible things in righteousness. You will do terrible things. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of God. You will shock men. You will shock men in business. You will surprise people in entrepreneurship. You will bring for things that have never been done before in your career. You will excel through wisdom in your academics. Wisdom will give you a place that your age cannot give you. Wisdom will take you beyond your geographical limitations. Pray. 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 I receive this wisdom. Make it serious tonight. 
This is a destiny decision. Take it serious tonight. This can mean the difference between you and other people. Show close compared a Korea car. Lord, change my life. Change my life. Change my life. I'm ready to leave the realm where I am to a higher level. I am tired of this level of finances. Tired of this level of leadership. Tired of this level of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray right now and say, Lord, I receive a baptism of love for you and grace to bless your people. Lift your voice and pray. A baptism of love. A baptism of love. Beyond church. Beyond church. Beyond prayer meetings. A baptism of love. Hallelujah. 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 Next prayer point. You're going to say, Lord, this night, kill greed and self-centeredness from my life forever lift your voice and pray lord kill it greed self-centeredness take it away from my life that mentality of i me and myself that mindset you are just thinking of yourself no you will never access wisdom that moves I kill self-centeredness in the name of Jesus. I consider others better than myself. The spirit of greed depart from God's people. This Nigerian mentality of greed, this Nigerian mentality of self-centeredness, be God from us. We are the blessed ones. Empowered to bless mankind. Empowered to bless mankind. Fire is burning in this place. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. I will read this and we will take the last prayer point. I tell you, this wisdom is hitting somebody in this place. I know it. Some of you will write it from this night. Listen to me. Proverbs 18. I will read it. Oh my God. Some of you, your, your family will thank you on their knees. They will thank you. They will thank you. You may look like you are nothing. I don't care how your past has been. God specializes in using the things that people think. Some of you have failed so much in life. You don't ever think you can make it. I tell you, take advantage of this wisdom and see how you will be in command of life. Hallelujah. Listen, let me just read this quickly. Listen, Proverbs 18. This is wisdom speaking. Doth not wisdom cry? 
and understanding stand it up stand it. understanding put forth her voice listen she stands at the top of high places by the way of the places of parts listen she cries at the gates and at the entry of the city at the entrance of the doors unto you O men i call this is wisdom crying calling for attention calling businessmen for attention calling entrepreneurs for attention calling ministers for attention calling family people wisdom is begging and saying you have paid attention to other things can you not give me your attention there is a baptism going on in this place this night he said oh ye simple understand wisdom and ye fools be of understanding heart here yeah, for I speak of excellent things and the opening of my lips shall be right things he said all the words of my mouth are in righteousness there is nothing crooked wisdom that will take you above tricks and pranks receive my instruction verse 10 and not silver stop chasing money stop chasing money stop hustling you will waste your time even if you get it it will not be sustained it will give you high blood pressure it will give you stroke wisdom will give you success with rest listen 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared with her he said i wisdom i dwell with prudence and i find out knowledge of witty inventions verse 14 we'll just read 14 to 16 and we'll stop listen he says counsel is mine there is no foolishness when you walk with me sound wisdom he said i am understanding and i have strength verse 15 by me kings reign kings don't reign by election are you hearing me by me kings reign this is wisdom telling you the things it has done by me kings reign and nobles and even the judges and princes decree justice by me princes rule and the nobles and all the judges of the earth listen 17 i love those who love me and those who seek me early shall find me those who seek me early those who seek me early hear this verse 18 final verse riches that men die for riches that men die for he said they are with me they are not in Aso rock they are not in london they are not in any bank i tell you they are with me riches and honor are with me yeah durable riches long lasting riches and righteousness we are going to pray final prayer point you are going to say lord let this wisdom fall on me many of you as you pray this prayer i tell you the wisdom of god will hit you some of you will sleep this night you will wake up with visions lift your voice and begin to pray let it fall oh god let it fall, O oh God. Wisdom from above. Make leaders with wisdom. Let it fall. Wisdom that will shock the world. Wisdom that will shock the business world. Wisdom that will shock the entrepreneurial world. Aya. Wisdom that will shock men in your career. Wisdom that will make your degree meaningful. 
wisdom to produce a model family wisdom to live perpetually in health wisdom to command prosperity cry the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling the wisdom is falling shake it take it take it take it take it take it open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god open the heavens oh god receive a baptism shake it for the altar koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom koinonia be baptized with the spirit of wisdom koinonia let it fall let it fall let business moguls arise from this wisdom lead us the true secret of kingdom success the true secret of undeniable kingdom success shake it at the table lift your hands everybody lift your hands see listen listen to me i tell you something take this wisdom from my life and there is no joshua selman again this is the mystery behind this young man you are seeing if you can believe this the day god told me i was not on stage the day god gave it to me you were not there i tell you students of the school of the spirit I want to release upon you a key tonight. I want to release upon you something that will mark your life. For if you believe it, truly you will receive. You can argue it, you can sit down there and watch others, or you can humble yourself and say, Lord, this is it. This is it. My spirit tells me this is it. Lift your hands. I want to pray out of the abundance of grace that has been given i want to pray i pray that as i declare may it come upon somebody right now in the name of jesus father you gave me this message this is the secret that scientists have not been able to discover this is the realm that defies the limitation of man's wisdom this is the true secret of kingdom success we started building last week and i want to pray i tell you the heavens are open in the name that is above all names at the count of three i tell you it will hit this building in a very mighty way at the count of three i just like you to shout after the count of three i receive and begin to receive it in your life it will change your life are you ready now one two three lord let it fall take it 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 receive it a baptism a fire a baptism the fire of wisdom the fire it comes from above let it change your status the wisdom of solomon receive it receive it receive it be marked with wisdom be marked with wisdom in business be marked with wisdom in your job be marked with wisdom wisdom to speak wisdom to preach wisdom to attract wealth 
wisdom to attract honor, wisdom for health. Take this wisdom and rescue your families. Take this wisdom and change your CGPA. Take this wisdom and change your marital status. Take this wisdom. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take this wisdom and end poverty in your life forever. Take this wisdom and stop begging forever. Take this wisdom and be in command. Command in ministry. Command in business. Command in your place of work. Command in your home. You may be the last born, but let this wisdom take you to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for you. Tonight, as many of you sleep, I declare the experience of Solomon. Let it happen to you in the name of Jesus. May the angels of wisdom visit you. May the God who gave Solomon wisdom impart you tonight. That business idea you have been praying and fasting for, tonight let it come by wisdom. In your place of meditation, let leadership wisdom come upon you. Hallelujah. I pray for you. The same way the cattle of Jacob were spotted so that anywhere you saw them, you knew that these were Jacob's cattle. I pray for you because you have come for Koinonia tonight. Favor has been our mark in this place. But to that favor, I add wisdom to you. I add wisdom to you. Please be seated. The Bible says the B part of 2 Chronicles 2020. In fact, let's look at John chapter 11 first. John 11 verse 40. I just want to challenge us in the area of believing. God wants to do a quick work tonight. But I don't want us to just come and waste our time. John 11 and verse 40. And waste our time tonight and then not receive something. You know, I made a vow before God. And every time I continue to vow it that... I, I keep saying, Lord, anoint me to a point that nobody needs to encounter me two times to be changed. Just once. It's okay. That once. Once. That if you ever travel from anywhere and come here tonight, that even before the meeting, you just begin to rejoice. Because you know that if it is God that brought you here, except even if it's a herbalist shrine, you won't come and go back the same. Are we together? I'm a student in the school of the anointing. I have been studying this all my life, but it's amazing, amazing, the dimensions and the possibilities that are surrounded in this mystery called the anointing. I repeat, you are not a blessing if you are not anointed. If you're a man of God here, please find a way of crying to God that he should put something definite upon your head otherwise lock your church or lock any uh, out outlet or what because you are totally wasting god's people's time if you are not anointed it takes more than good intention to bless people there is something from the realm of the spirit that must come upon people that you are in this meeting now and you know, not that after the grace you are just believing that, oh, let's see what happens. No, you can know that this one, 
i know that the anointing to solve my problem is this you can know you can know it's true a man doesn't have to tell you he's rich before you say he's rich as he's talking you look at him that's how it is with the anointing you can know you are in the place where the anointing to solve your problem is there and jesus said unto her say yet i not unto thee listen that if thou wouldest believe he says thou shouldest see the glory of god have i not said to you that if you believe you will see that if you believe you will see there is a relationship between your faith and your experience listen very carefully it's just an exhortation tonight that if you believe you will see that means whether you see the glory of god or not it is still there hmm. whether you receive the breakthrough or not the breakthrough is there whether it will be featured in your life is a different thing altogether are we together now whether you have a car or not there there are still cars in in a showroom now as we talk is that true whether you you have a house or not there are still houses empty and available so it's one thing for that reality to be available but it's another thing for that reality to become your experience are we together everything we so desire brothers and sisters is available in christ it's a reality in the realm of the spirit but there are systems in the kingdom that can capture that reality and make it your experience here and now that reality does not bless you for as long as it remains in the realm of the spirit your prayer and your desire is that the word becomes flesh so that it dwells among us then we can behold the glory for as long as it is still in the realm of the spirit it doesn't profit you what good is it if you keep having dreams and see yourself rising and then it never manifests open doors in the dreams close doors in your experience lifting in the spirit or whatever visions you're having but in the physical nothing seems to happen the bible says if thou wouldest believe you would think this is a very little expression if you will believe truly it says you will see my god that means i can stand here desiring a lot of things in my life and god is saying all those things that look far you can the word see here does not just mean view it uh -uh. it means capture it let it be your experience if you will believe believe and second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 guides us on the dimensions of believing second chronicles 2020 and here's what he says jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem two believings here the first belief notice is a big b believe in the lord your god that's the first dimension of your believing believe in the lord your god to believe in the lord does not just mean to agree that he's alive mm -mm. to believe in the lord your god number one means to be convinced and convicted about who god really is and what he's able to do you don't just sit down and casually believe believe is a product of of a contemplation that happens in your spirit by the way let me advise you for a very long time we preachers have been telling people that believing just happens in your spirit believing must happen in your spirit your mind and your body the entire tripartite nature of man is involved in believing i guarantee you believe alone with your spirit you will never get anything your mind needs to get to that state too your body needs to participate it's a well-meaning teaching but it's not a complete teaching you believe god spirit soul and body because your entire tripartite nature has a role to play in the manifestation of the promises of god for you believe in the lord your god 
notice it didn't say believe in jesus in fact it didn't say believe in god believe in the lord when the bible uses the word lord is a very interesting expression because the, the word lord there means is, is from the word adon it means master it means owner it means manipulator are we together yes believe in the lord your god get to a point by the spirit where you are convinced that he's not scamming you get to a point where you are convinced it's a point of unbendable persuasion that you believe that if god says he's going to change my family truly he will it's amazing how many action movies we act in church you will think we really believe god but we don't some of you as you are seated right now if i ask you do you believe god can change your life you will say yes just because your head was nodding up and down doesn't mean you believe are we together now it's a revelation man of god do you believe in the anointing yes i believe but it's not true because it's not showing the bible says if you believe you will see that means if you are not seeing there is something wrong with that believing are you getting what i'm saying you have to find a way of believing this conviction conviction that the spirit brings that you have gotten to a point of unbendable persuasion that everything god has said concerning my life now regardless of whether that experience listen you don't believe it when it manifests it should be obvious when it manifests you believe it to make it happen not because it has happened it is your faith that will transport that reality from the realm of the spirit i sit down and just tell you oh someone is going to shout for instance under the anointing that's a stupid thing what if it doesn't happen so what is the what what gives that audacity is suicidal for a man of god your, your reputation and your ministry is at stake you don't get up and just start speaking and saying things and talking nonsense i hope you know if it doesn't happen people will say you see this is how proud people end but there is a level of conviction conviction are we together now if i tell you sam to walk and come to me it is because you trust your legs are we together if i ask someone on a wheelchair to stand up and walk to me that person does not trust his legs yet because of the obvious situation so he won't stand up and he would try but if i ask you to come now you are not you don't have any experience with your legs that should disturb you you must get to that point of persuasion you see god is not a politician god was not voted into power it's not like there is somebody that supervises him in heaven he does not have a disciplinarian nobody rebukes him listen carefully we're talking about the god of the universe we're not talking about the god of christians we're talking about the god of all flesh god is not a christian he is the father of lights the owner it belongs to him God will not come on earth and go to the camp of Christians. The whole earth is his own. Whether you believe in him or not, you face the consequence of fighting the creator. But he is the God of all flesh. Has thou not heard? Has thou not seen? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't get tired. doesn't get weary. So when that God looks at you, with the same power of creation and says i want to change your life then we now sit down and say oh god that's exactly what my director told me and god said you have brought me in the same category with your director who is only 45 years old you know how old i am go and find out if age gives ability god still qualifies to be god even if it's just by age let's assume that the older you are the more powerful you are god is still god by that reference believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god 
believe in the Lord your God get to a point of persuasion and say Lord based on my calculation it will take five years for my family to get this miracle but there's something I know about you that when you decide to rend the heavens and step over a man's situation one month becomes too much you see listen as you are hearing what I'm saying you are saying amen but something within me is saying you are not apostle don't make a fool out of yourself are we together now if a Jimmy is a landlord of an estate and you are trusting God to save 30 million to buy a house and he looks at you and assuming you didn't know he was a landlord he just says Kai I want to bless you and someone just whispers to you and say that's the landlord the awareness that is a landlord does something you say ah sir good afternoon I, I'm not even because you are aware something just opened you up to the potentials in him that he can compress a 10 years journey in a moment this is the God I serve the Bible says the word of God is quick shout quick not slow it may look slow until God decides to shake himself and say now let me lift Kenny now let me lift this and you are surprised even you the benefactor there are sides to the equation of greatness no man can explain it's a mystery you just know i prayed i did this from a to b to c i don't know what happened there i just know that a finger manipulated this are we together believe in the lord many believers don't believe God many believers it has to be in this order believe in the Lord your God believe what about him believe that he is God you can believe he's a deity that's not the information required for your greatness you can believe that he's not a man Satan too is not a man many other spirits too are not men so there's nothing special about believing that he's not a man. You must believe that he's the mighty God. And you must believe in his ability. I don't know how to make you see this. Look, let me tell you, when you focus on God and who he is and his might, you will turn back and see the possibility of your situation shrinking before him. And then you will be brought to a point where you will agree, Lord, you can change my life, I believe. Lord, you can wipe my tears. There are many faithless people just because they are holding their Bibles and speaking what is written there. They think they believe. No! It's a conviction. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I believe you. That's why he left us the word of God to help us believe him. The word of God is a commitment from God to you. It's, it's, it's a manifesto. It's to give you room to vet him that means if you have any fears as to why you should not believe him he still leaves the word are we together believe in the lord your god by doing so you shall be established so he says be convinced and convicted about who god is and what he's able to do second timothy chapter 1 and verse 2 says but i know whom i have believed he says i am persuaded that he is able i am persuaded that he is able hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says for without faith it is impossible to please god listen he says for he that cometh to god like you have come now it says you must come believing that he exists and then that he's a rewarder let me see how many of you came from far if you came from far let me see your hands how many of you honestly had quite a stressful journey coming now do you think please drop your hands thank you do you think that God will watch you live wherever you heard the, someone came from Ghana someone came from my degree so within and outside this nation people coming there are many people connecting from around the world do you believe if you were God will you sit on your throne and watch someone almost have an accident and for 12 hours come and sit down some of you have been here probably since 12 in the afternoon 
or two or three and then as God you sit down and then say okay share the grace may God bless you I don't know the God you gave your life to but the one I gave my life to is a serious God it's a very serious God we are used to people playing games with our lives God is not just a trustworthy God he is too serious that he gave his son to die and then he will play games with your life no sir he's a rewarder he's a rewarder let me tell you something you've heard me say it if you ever find yourself coming here to koinonia that you are right here safely alone is a sign that half of your challenges have gone um, now uh, you would think i'm saying it just because i'm the man of god here you decide to come here and see the attacks that will arise money that you are saving will disappear all of a sudden every to some of you the morning to come you are not even yet sure whether you will come it's a spirit believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god sister believe in the lord your god my brother believe in the lord your god concerning your admission believe in the lord your god concerning the baby i know it's five years but believe in the lord your god believe concerning god turning your life around you need more than a job you need breakthrough you need favor if you get a job of fifty thousand, you are still backward because you should have been working for the past 10 years so now the issue is not just a job of 50 or 100 thousand that god can you shift my what would have been the backlog of the past shift my 10 years to enter my september and wait for me there that i can enter september and I, I, it will look as if september is 10 years put together One of the greatest ways breakthrough comes is the manipulation of time. Read your Bible and see what God did with time when it was time to visit people. He made the sun to stand still. He made the sun to go backward. Are we together? He did something to time. When you lose time, you have lost everything. Believe in the Lord your God. Number two. Please, let's go back to um, Second Chronicles. He said, believe in his prophets. Listen carefully. His prophets here doesn't just mean someone that prophesies. His prophets here doesn't even mean someone who is not fake. That means someone who is real. That's not what he's talking about. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. To prosper means to do well. He says, believe his prophets. His prophets are not just people who prophesy. His prophets are not just real men of God. <clears throat> Listen carefully. This is where we miss it. You must learn this. His prophets here are not just men who are doing the biddings of God. It has nothing to do with maybe someone being real. His prophets here means the person sent to you listen listen the bible um come sam come darling look at this i'm elijah and i'm going to the house of a widow of zarephath are we together don't you think on my way going i'm going to meet other people who have problems so i meet a gentleman who has a problem and i just greet him how are you where is the house of the widow of zarephath he's shaking me but doesn't receive anything because i'm not sent to him i'm a prophet i probably met other widows elijah probably met other widows lamenting and he said oh dear you mean it you mean this how your life is sorry eh and he kept going the same way jesus saw 10 lepers the same way jesus would see people and touch one and stand up and go there is a man sent to you there is an anointing sent to you listen i know that many people will not like me for what i'm telling you not every anointing can bless you 
generally speaking by opening your heart i mean at the anointing a portion to change your destiny it's true hear what i'm telling you and then god will bless you there is an anointing a portion there is a grace designated let me tell you happy are you the day you come into the environment where the anointing that was sent for you do you know let me tell you this and i tell you this honestly my heart is passionate when it has to do with blessing people but i have met people in my life that i just prayed for them just for praying sake but i knew in my spirit i wasn't sent to them of course you won't tell them so they don't feel bad but you know but i've seen others i could even wait for them to share their challenges because i know i know the anointing sent to you so believe his prophets are we together there were many widows in zarephath elijah was looking for just one Habba prophet what of other women <clears throat> i love them i can pray i can intercede may god bless you do a b and c but i'm looking for a woman of zarephath where is she finally you find her and his clash is not even ready for you she's doing something else the prophet would have been angry to say i spent time to come here you don't even know what you are missing i'm on my way going but because he was sent he had to stay his assignment was to change her life when you find the anointing and the prophet that god has sent over your life and your situation let me tell you you will watch that anointing rubbish your situation in the as if satan does not exist it's, it's not just this is where we have a little challenge with many believers who just say the most important thing is God yes you are right but you are wrong the most anointing is anointing what is there what is so special about this man of God this is what I'm teaching you now people are sent to people even the word of God is sent he sent his word like a messenger meaning until that word is sent you can stay there but when the word comes like a messenger angel Gabriel left other believers around earth and was directed to one person Daniel all that fight for 21 days in the heavenlies he would have been angry to say I'm going to someone else mm -mm. he said Daniel I am come to give you understanding are you the only one I am come to give you understanding Jesus is appearing by the road Saul is on his way to Damascus brothers and sisters the Bible says there were other people with Saul God would have been fair enough to at least give them something and then he isolates one person and discusses with the person the rest just fall down and don't even know what threw them down they just got up to clean themselves and say Kai now what is all this one now whereas one person has that encounter sent 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 the word that changes my life sent i have had encounters with sent words and sent prophets and my god did my life change tonight let me tell you if you can believe this he said believe his prophets i know you are a businessman i know you are educated I know you are smart but there are many equations in this life that cannot be solved with pen and paper they are solved from the realm of the spirit it's only the result you receive here are we together now believe in his prophets so shall you prosper write this down please his prophet here is the vessel sent from him to you you must first acknowledge that this vessel is sent from God to you. And one of the ways that you can help yourself to believe the prophet God has sent to you is investigate the dealings of God with that man. Don't just believe for nothing. 
you have a right to investigate the dealings of God with that man what is so special about this man why should I believe him why should I take the word that he's bringing seriously every true prophet of God has a track record of his dealings with God investigate the dealings of God study the track records of his results I think it's unfair if you just yoke people to believe you just like that no give them room to study the track records of your result and find out whether the results are worth your believing how do you believe his prophets open up your spirit to receive both his grace and his instructions don't just receive the grace alone instructions many times believers miss it because we miss instructions very subtle instructions sometimes very ego stinging instructions like you were seated here now and then i just said everybody shout jesus you know i don't mean to embarrass your intelligence you don't sit on a seat and shout jesus you've been singing a song before you came here you there was jesus more than 10 times in that song you kept shouting jesus jesus lover of my soul and nothing happened and here you are sitting and a man is saying just shout jesus once if you don't have this revelation you can sit down and say please what is we are not children here what is all this nonsense he told naaman go to jordan wash seven times naaman said me jordan there are clean rivers somewhere and the small girl said you are the one in trouble if you don't go and wash you can go back with your lepros two scriptures and then we'll pray exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians it says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one god does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the the leftover of unbelief because you see some of us are coming from different christian experiences some of us have been 
our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology all kinds of philosophies some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of god prophets and whatever and chances are that when you come like this usually you will just add the man of god to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them and god says not so and he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in mount zion are we together it's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your own belief immediately readjust your own belief while the devil is trying to lie to you can your life be changed all of a sudden the the power will touch the person near you this somebody you shook hands with turn to your neighbor and say this and that so you know that the person uh, the person can be acting It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe one word from God can turn your life around one prophetic word can turn your life around all these strange spirits that oppress people they don't just go because they are told to go no it takes the anointing I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now i said i am amazed at how people in africa and nigeria trivialize success i am shocked at how people um believe that success is about luck it's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like i think these people are just fortunate is that true I, I, this were my contemplations while I was coming listen there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake now including the testimony you are about to have that gentleman from Ghana he did not just press this thing and found my name no 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 the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that A new phone not new uh, what they call that thing not new memory card I'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who, who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the, the 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 earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember month no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough 
many people are working and they are trusting God for breakthrough. And remember, the strange thing about finance, do you know why, listen, I'm not talking about money, we're going to pray shortly. Do you know why many believers are poor? Because in the kingdom, finance is warfare. Money is not just an instrument to live well, it's a weapon. See, listen. Oh dear, what's it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let me just talk a little. You was, uh, I, I didn't plan to say this, but Ecclesiastes 7, verse 12. Let me show you something. May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon, like a shield, I use it for defense. And the Bible says one of the many weapons, money is one of them. And the Bible says those weapons are not carnal. The word not carnal means they are not man-made. But my brother, my sister, this thing is man-made. It was made by CBN. That means this is not what God is talking about. Because this is man-made. But the Bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal. He says it is mighty through God. That means there is a spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? That means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses. Money is a defense. It can defend the gospel. It can defend a man. And the Bible says all those weapons, they are not carnal. So if you ever see this looking for anybody, Naira does not look for men. Something makes it come. I, please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman 
how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we are sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal that you're sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no I want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> This one is not brain work now. This one is not one plus one. I told you one plus one plus God is equal to whatever he says the answer should be. One plus one is two. But one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today, you should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters, I present to you this same God who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? pray believers Lord I know you are able 
you are able to take away this reproach from this family talk to Jesus even if you find yourself crying just continue to speak Lord you are able change this situation turn my academics around Lord turn my finances around Lord I'm in a situation right now where only you the God of heaven can arise turn my ministry around Lord I'm confused I don't even know where to go right now I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right but I receive grace pray are you praying kill unbelief as you are praying don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time God of heaven It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turnaround oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help One more prayer point Lord I believe you and I believe your servant I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around walk on any unbelief in my heart oh God and take it out tonight go ahead and pray every spirit of doubt every spirit of fear Isaiah 61 
please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord the same lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn it takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men it takes the anointing verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion now this is the part I like to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for god to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire i brought here tonight i'm not walking back with it lift your voice and pray every let your faith rise as you pray every desire Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness.
the people I'm going to ask to come out if the anointing comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside it's because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically. That's why I'm saying you should. You should just hold them. Are we together now? The Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen. Speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands. Inside, outside, online. And I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed and speed must come upon them right now i declare at the count of three one two three receive that grace i command speed speed right now speed let the hand of god come upon you the bible says the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to Israel. i command speed receive it is coming on you now some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family it's not just you alone it's coming on you for the sake of your family let the chains be broken i release speed speed in one month in one month i'm prophesying that in one month what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of Jesus Christ, speed. Shalakato sadakata, sheketo kata shalakato ziata. Now listen, fire in the spirit has many significance. Fire, this fire is a mystery. It was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here. Fire does not run away from any element. Fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit. Whether you put metal, the metal will be hot. Wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about 
So you sing that song by the time we pray. In the name of Jesus, I'm stretching my hands right now. Spirit of the Lord, you seek to reveal yourself as fire. That consuming fire. No power and no spirit. Even spirits can be burnt by fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hallelujah. Madam, please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? 
the one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from Eduguri. What is this? My CV. Your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, oh dear, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify I declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion I command it I declare it I decree it. in the name of Jesus I command it I decree it I declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ stretch your hands towards me your hand is a symbol of your productivity and there are many of you there is no grace on the works of your hands I look and in the spirit I don't see the blessing of the Lord working that's what is responsible for hardship it's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. 
whatever it is you are involved in god is about to bring grace upon it i stretch my hands right now at the count of three may the fire of god come through your hands into your life lord i pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense there are many people you can stand i'm, I'm saying everybody but this is specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage i'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that veil must be torn In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the holy ghost sisters may that anointing come upon you now may that grace come upon you now i declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is i change it now in the name of jesus I change it now in the name of Jesus.
Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come. I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. Uh, you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high there. From where? Hi, From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter. Hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married. Well, where that was. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now. Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this? I pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you but then never enter your life. Yes. What yes, do you sir. do? I'm working in a security. You are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your master's? Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint this one is a prophet's reward it's not just that god is saying do this there is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward the possibilities that accompany an office i declare in the name of the god of heaven whom i represent may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you listen i lift you from this security work you are doing and i put you in a position that befits your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it. I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer. Because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, 
I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church. Your boss calls you and says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again. In the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad. And the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the spirit. There are some of you. It's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians. You go to embassies. And see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that seemed right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in U.S. or U.K. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the Spirit.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send, you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it. And ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them. And then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jakes Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga overflow one Pastor Femi promise overflow two please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed 
right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, be healed right now.
hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 hallelujah hallelujah that's what my song that's what my song will be 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 come on say what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Kado Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Those following from any nation of the world, I'd like you to just pray. We're just going to pray and speak over this. Go ahead. Stretch your hands. We're praying on this request. Shalabakaruta sabre de gete gata baladaba. Nataka parakato shada bre de gete beledebos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Hashala gata brada gata barakato sada bre de gete. In the cross, Azia Sahasa Barakatosha Brada Gadabaladaba Rakata Branda Gadabaladabush Ebratos Gadabrandi Gadabaladabush Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. 
Lika to shata prateke to sa predege deba Rakata parata parato sa de predege deba ladaba Arato sekele monta shindaba In the name of Jesus Father we thank you Lord it is before you these prayers are laid out Father we give you praise Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that are bound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit Amen. you bring healings you bring deliverance Amen. you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus Amen. you bring changes lord deaths supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life I declare by the hand of God Almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ what you cannot do for yourself I ask my God to do it for you in this season 
if you're a man of God here I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough I've taught you the principles of finances but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season in the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name I hope you believe everything I'm saying please believe it with all your heart 
I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it I say it again, if that vehicle is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. I pray for your finances again. That in the name of Jesus, the worship team sang here and said, Ebenezer, there is a God that can help men. I pray for you directly, finance. That's the prayer I'm praying for you now. I know you love God already. I'm not doubting your passion for God. But the resources that it will take, especially for you, my dear brothers, it takes a lot for a young man to be established and it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day in the name of jesus the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the lord i command your establishment now He said, keep us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I pray for you. Any orchestration of evil, a trap of Satan, so that you will enter and it will destroy your life. Quarter to getting into that trap. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rescue you out of it. Two or three more prayers and we're done. Any friend in your life, any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually, destiny-wise, financially, I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you, to want to marry you, are people who don't love God. Or you are a nice, well-meaning brother, but your friend is an arm robber. Your friend is a 419er. Your friend, what? Any kind of wrong relationship, whether you are aware or not, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let there be a separation right now. And I pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this city. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. 
if there is any deceiver in your life i say it again may the god of heaven expose them in this name. whatever has tampered with your love for god there is something called first love first love is fire fire for god fire for the house of god that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said i was glad not i was angry not i was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of god is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of god that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the antichrist i declare fresh passion for the things of god fresh passion for the house of god you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m you are signing poverty with your destiny both god and satan agree that laziness leads to suffering are we together there are many of us here i, I don't hate you you know i love you with all my heart but your deliverance needs to be laziness 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 i'm not as concerned about our sisters but this our brothers you are the ones i'm talking to Sis, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping <laughs> believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of god you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if that they have no paid school fees say what will i do is irresponsible it's irresponsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of jesus i declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible i release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now <laughs> hallelujah we speak peace over zaria we speak peace over kaduna state and we speak peace over this nation we decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere we declare that christ must be glorified in this season in the name of jesus christ and for all of you who are doing one thing or the other whether job whether ministry whatever it is i declare multiplication of results in the name of jesus christ 
before we take the altar call i want to encourage you please listen please listen everyone next week friday next week we're going to have koinonia on sunday is 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 our som graduation we'll announce that shortly but on friday please listen we're all waiting upon the lord we're fasting okay there's no koinonia so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you